Hey folks, Granite Wheeler here. This is a follow up to the last video I did on the Auburn Selectalock locking differential. In this video, I'm going to go over some of the installation and setup details, and then at the end, I will provide my feedback after having driven the Jeep for several thousand miles and taking one trip to the Rubicon Trail. Let's get started by going over the new electrical components that Auburn sent me. They sent me a new electromagnet and electrical parts kit since the original parts were damaged. There were some small cuts on the wire leads to the electromagnetic coil exposing the conductor to gear oil. So Auburn sent me a new coil along with the new installation kit. To pull it apart, remove the spring clip and then the thrust washer. The coils pull right off, leaving the metal actuator ring. The new electromagnetic coil and the metal ring were shipped as a set with a single part number. When the magnet is engaged, the metal ring presses down on these aluminum dowels to engage the spring-loaded locking mechanism inside the carrier housing. I put the original coil back on for the initial fitment and setup. The replacement electrical installation kit came with a new switch and 20 feet of high quality wiring that was pre-terminated with a Deutsch connector. Okay, let's get these carriers on the scale, but let's zero out the scale first. First up is the old Eaton two-pinion e-locker with its electromagnet at 35 pounds. Next up is the Auburn Selectalock with its electromagnet at 45 pounds. That's a 10 pound difference in unsprung weight. Okay, now let's look at the fitment of the carrier with electromagnet installed to see where it comes into contact with the axle housing casting. I left out the ring and pinion for now. This is where the magnet comes into contact with the bottom part of the housing. And this is where the magnet comes into contact at the top. Here it is from another angle. I tried scribing some marks with a pick, but ended up using a little paint instead because it was more visible. We need to keep track of which direction the markings are pointing between the bearing caps and the cast housing. Left and right are different, and orientation is important. I set up a couple of neomagnets to catch as much of the metal shavings as possible. To grind the metal away, I used an angled die grinder to trim the upper and lower points of contact. For the ring and pinion, I went with a new, genuine spicer set that was made in the USA. Setup was easy since the spicer gears do not have nitriding. Here's a look at the final pattern. And this is the final check for clearance between the electromagnet and the differential housing. It should not touch the housing at all. Auburn calls for a minimum clearance of at least 20 thousandths of an inch. It should free float and not be bound up by the small retaining bracket on the lower bolt. This is the final setup after sealing the floating axle shafts as well as sealing the wiring and the breather fitting. It's right before I pop the cover on. Okay, we've gotten through a careful 500 mile break-in period with proper heat cycling. I drained out the break-in oil and then had a look at the drain plug magnet. This is about what I would expect after a break-in. Here's a look at the ring gear. It looks really good.
Now let's double check to see that the locker works. Everything looks good. Let's put the cover back on and roll it. At this point, I've had a chance to run my Jeep for over 2,500 miles and have made one trip to the Rubicon Trail so far this year. I plan to run the Rubicon Trail multiple times this year along with other trails in the area such as Fordyce and Slick Rock. I don't trailer my Jeep, I drive it to the trail every time and it's a three hour drive each way. Other than the time that it takes to air the tires down and then back up, there is not much cool down time in between the trail and the street. The recent Rubicon trip was 416 miles round trip. We ran the whole trail from the Loon Lake trailhead to the Tahoe trailhead. We did some wheeling back and forth while on the trail and wheeled the trail at least one and a half times total. Normally, I never use the lockers unless I get stuck and work at it a little. On this trip, I was purposely a little locker happy. I enabled the Auburn locker on the fly and mid-obstacle many times. As soon as I cleared the obstacle, I'd turn off the locker. Engagement of the locker was instant and smooth. I'm not sure if it matters or not, but my Jeep has a manual transmission. The Auburn locker didn't miss a beat off-road, and operation on-road was smooth and quiet. That speaks more about the ring and pinion, though. About this time next year, which would be about June or July of 2025, I will post a long-term review after a full season of wheeling and street driving. As part of the review, I'll pull the differential cover and take a look at the wear. That's all I have for now. Thanks for watching. See you on the trail.